Hey, welcome to Draft Academy. My name is Mike, and in this video, we're gonna be having ChatGPT challenge me to build something fun and simple on the web. So I said here in this prompt, let's build a front-end web challenge. It'll challenge me to build something simple using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. We'll do it step-by-step -step and don't give me any code. So let's see what ChatGPT comes up with. All right, he loves the energy. The challenge is a reaction time game. So we're gonna build a simple game that tests how fast someone can click when prompted. So set up the structure, create a basic HTML structure and layout, design a page with a start button in the center in an empty area where the game will run. Think of it like a little arena. So let's go ahead and do that. Now I just have a little code pen open up over here. So we probably essentially need two things, right? We need the game area where the user is gonna be clicking and I guess it'll like change color or something. And then we need a start button which says to start. So let's go ahead and create that. First thing I'm gonna do is create something called a little wrapper div. So this will just kind of wrap everything up. And then inside of the wrapper, we're gonna create the arena. So I'll call this arena. So that's where the game is gonna kind of take place. And then we'll also create down here a start button. So we have essentially these three things, right? We have the wrapper, we have the arena, and then we have the start button. Now let's give these a little bit of styling. So, oops. Whenever you save on CodePen, it always just like completely resets the entire screen. That seems like they could fix that with using some localhost stuff, or not localhost, uh, using some local storage. So what they would do is store like how far this is out in local storage, and then it wouldn't have to do that. Anyway, so let's go ahead and create the arena. And why don't we just make this like with, um, why don't we do, I don't know, 100, EMs and then height is like 100 EMs, something like that. And then we'll give it a background of gray to start. Okay, so that's actually way too much. Oh, I wanted to do 10, not 100, whoops. <laughs> okay, yeah, so that's, uh, maybe we could do like 20. It doesn't really matter. And then for the wrapper, I'm also gonna have this essentially take up the whole width of the screen. So we'll have the wrapper, that's gonna be width, 100 viewport width, and then the height is gonna be 100 viewport height. And then we're gonna make this display flex. All right, cool. And then what we could do is we could say justify content and that's gonna be center. So this will put everything kind of in the center. And then the last thing we'll do is create this start button. And I'm actually gonna give this some text. Start. And why don't we make this So we'll give this a width of, eh, why don't we do like 10 EMs, height, 10 EMs, and then I'm gonna give this a border radius of 100%. So that'll be like a little circle, and then let's give it a background, salmon. I love this salmon color. And then here, I want this the start to be in the middle, so we're gonna make this display flex justify content center, and then align items is gonna be center. So that way the start text will be in the middle, and then why don't we change the font size to, I don't know, three EM, something like that. And actually, whoops, this is gonna be REMs. So if I put EMs here, then it's relative to this font size, but if I do REMs, then it's relative to the normal font size. And then why don't we give this a cursor pointer. All right, cool. And then the last thing I wanna do is make sure that these are stacked vertically on top of each other. So over here we could say flex direction and that's gonna be column. And there we go, that looks pretty good. And actually then uh, instead of justify content here, this is gonna to need to be align items because everything is kind of situated differently. All right, cool. So now we have our start button. When you click on it, then it should start our little game. So let's see what else ChatGPT says for us to do. All right, so we need to design the page with the start button in the center, empty area where the game will run. All right, so let's do next. So I'm guessing what'll happen is like the arena part is gonna like change color or something and then we'll have to click on, the, click on it or something. So when the user clicks the start button, the game should wait a, a random amount of time between one and three seconds and then prompt the user to click as fast as possible. Add a delay after clicking start. After the delay, show a visual cue, like changing the background color and showing the word click. And then for that moment, you're timing how fast the user clicks. Okay, 
So actually, why don't we ask ChatGPT to generate us the code for the randomness? So generate me the code for the random one to three seconds. This is a little bit of like vibe coding. We'll have ChatGPT help us out here. This is always tricky. I always forget how to do this, but yeah, math.random times 2000 plus 1000. So it's between 1000 milliseconds and 3000 milliseconds. And then we set the timeout and then we show the click queue. Okay, so then let's go over here and add that code in. So here we have our delay and then at the timeout, we wanna show the click. So what we'll do is we'll create an element in here, which is just gonna be, and we'll just give this an ID of click. And what this will do is it'll just say click. And we only want to show this though, when at like after this time is up. And then also too here in the arena, I'm gonna change. So why don't we change the color to white and then We'll give it display flex. Uh, this is what you pretty much do for everything. Justify content center and then align items center. All right, so that's just in there. And then why don't we also increase the font size? And we're actually gonna have to change these as well. So we'll create the font size is like two EM, something like that. So it's just like a little bit bigger. And then whenever this clicks, we're gonna start a timer. And then as soon as they click on that button, or as soon as they click inside of the arena, then we'll stop. So uh, what we wanna do is we wanna run this timeout whenever they click on the start button. So let's go ahead and grab the start button real quick. So I can say const start button is equal to document.query selector. And I wanna grab the the element with the class start button on it, right? So then that gives us access to the start button. And then we can say down here, start button dot add event listener. And we wanna listen for a click. And then whenever they click on this, then we can do all of this stuff down here. And so then they click on the start button and then why don't we also create a piece of state here that says, um, actually, no, why don't we can do that later. I was going to say like a piece of state that tells us whether or not they're currently playing the game, but we can, we can do that afterwards. So you have a start button here and then we add event listener for the click. Whenever they click, we set this timeout and then over here. So initially we want to have this click right here. So this text, we want this to be display none. So, or why don't we just make it visibility hidden? So here we can say, and I'll just put this up here actually. That way it's kind of more clear, visibility hidden. And then whenever they click on here, we'll set that to visibility um, visible. So then we can create a variable for that as well. So this is gonna be the click is equal to document dot query selector, we'll grab the click. And then over here we can say click.style.visibility is equal to visible. All right, cool. So now whenever they click on here, let's see if this works. So we'll click on the start button and then after a specified amount of time, and actually I have an error somewhere in here. Let's see. Not read property of null style. Oh, okay, so, oh, this was an ID, not a class, my bad. All right, so now we click on here and then after a specified amount of time, hopefully that click shows up, boom, so it shows up. So then the idea is that once this shows up, we wanna essentially like time the amount of time that it takes them to click on it, right? So let's do that again, or let me just refresh this page. So we click on the start button and then boom, click shows up. So then once the click shows up, then we want to uh, set that aside. So why don't we go here and we're gonna create a piece of state called time elapsed and that's gonna be equal to zero. So this is gonna store milliseconds. So then um, essentially what we'll do here is we'll say whatever this timeout is done. In other words, whenever that click text, sh click text shows up, we can say time 
elapsed is equal to date dot. Or why don't we call this start time? Yeah, start time is equal to date dot now. So that's going to give us like milliseconds. It's just going to give us like this long string of milliseconds. And then what we'll do over here is we can say arena. Or actually, no, I need to get access to that. So once again, we're going to do document dot query selector. We need to get the arena, which is the little gray box there. And that's just going to be arena. So then we can say arena dot add event listener click. And then over here, we'll say, um, and I guess we can just alert this. So we'll alert out start time. Actually, it'll be date dot now minus start time. And then we we also want to check to see because like if I click on this now, you'll see it's just like giving us that. But if I click on it after this time has elapsed, now you can see 560 milliseconds. So um, we probably want to create a piece of state here, which is called active, and that's going to be equal to false initially. So if not active, then we can, or yeah, so we'll say if it's active, then we can return from here. So in other words, if the game is currently running, like if, if this timeout is currently running, then we'll set active equal to true. So then down here we can say active is equal to true. So if it's already running and then they click on the start button, we don't want anything to happen. And then down here, we only want this, or actually wait, so hold on, active, we would need active and then, trying to think about this. We might need two pieces of state actually. So we would have to check if, oh, maybe we, yeah. Okay. So we'll have let counting, how, why don't we say has started is equal to false. And then if has started, then return. Otherwise has started is equal to true. And then down here we can say active is equal to true. And then down here we could say if active. I think that might pretty much do it. There might be a little bit of an error in some of that logic, but see now if we click on this start button, it starts that random timer and then I click here and then it tells us how many milliseconds have elapsed. But then like now you can see it keep, kind of keeps going. We, we also probably wanna have like a reset button. Why don't we add that in and then that can be kind of like the last thing that we do. So then down here, We'll say reset. And we can even just make this an actual button. All right, so we have our reset button and then when we click on it and then down here, I'll get access to that. Okay, and then whenever we say reset.add, event listener click. So whenever they click on the reset button, then we can reset this and we can just say, Oh, and actually I forgot to fill this in. Um, if, Oh no, I guess this would still work. Right. Uh, okay. So then if they do the reset, then we would say active equal to false and has started is equal to false. And then we would also want to say start time is equal to zero. Okay. So let's go ahead and run all of this. Oh, and then we probably also want to set the click dot style dot visibility is equal to hidden. So now we click start. We click. 706 milliseconds and then we can restart and then play the game again. Cool. Let's see how, I, how fast I can do this. Yeah, 378. That's not too bad. All right. So then just to kind of go over everything, right, we have our CSS up here and our HTML just kind of lays out all the main components. We get access to all of these different things. We have a few pieces of state, like if it started or not. So if it started, then we don't want to run this timeout stuff again. And then down here, 
the game can also be active and when it's active then we want to be able to alert out the date dot now minus the start time right and then otherwise we can just reset things with that reset button so I think that just about does it for this. I'm gonna go ahead and end the video there, but I just wanted to say thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one.